taking collective or taking self responsibility and saying, whoa, right now enough is enough. I'm releasing. I am releasing those old stories, and they're going to come up again and again. But I am writing a new story. I'm writing a new empowered story for the flourishing of life on a whole. You know, for the entire life system. Well, and I think just to highlight, I think what I'm hearing you say, I'm, I'm thinking about this worldwide system, this this paradigm that just doesn't work for <laughs> everyone. It only works for a few people. And it's like we have been raised and institutionalized to feel as if we continue to need to be parented. And we're parented by the government and we just give our power away. It's like, and so mm -hmm. I think that's what you're saying. Like, hello, when we, and I'm, I'm going to say this, it may come off a little abrasive, but when we all just kind of grow up or wake up to the fact like, holy crap, I'm in control of my life. Like, yeah. I have, I'm an active participant in this, and I can make the choice to do things that are of service and then go to the other, like, keep moving on that path, and all of a sudden... I become a vehicle for source, essentially, is what I'm hearing you say. And I am no longer in control. <laughs> I'm a part of this whole thing. And it is just moving through me. And I am exactly. this vehicle, a channel for peace and love, you know? Um, so, Valerie. Oh, I, uh, uh, I guess I'm not at that level yet. But what I find, uh, what sticks in my mind is this concept of uh, lagging. In other words, that, well, you're an you're um, officer of the court. You're a, you're a uh, an elected official. You're a teacher. You're a, a principal. I mean, I'm thinking of people who make me feel like I'm not as important. And that whole issue that not only do they encourage that, but that we encourage it by accepting it. And I think that's a real practical issue that that it's really hard to get past because we grow up with this idea, you're you're the student, you know, okay? and, or else you're the authority. But that everybody is important to really believe that is very hard. To believe that you're important. I just you know, I that the rank that somebody has does not make them more human. Right. Yes. It doesn't make you less more human. powerful. Right. That's what it is. You know, that that's very hard to get over in our society, and it has to do with with uh, competition also. You know, I've I've got all these degrees. I'm more yeah. Or my mother says I'm more important. I don't know how people get to that point. There's certain personalities. If, if I may piggyback off of that a little bit. Yeah. Yes, please. I think that that's a huge point. However, we don't acknowledge that in our society. We have a myth of equality oh, yeah. in our society. Oh, yeah. So therefore, people say that there are, there are no ranks. Yeah, right. And I had a huge problem with this in graduate school. My professors always invited me to refer to them in casual ways. <laughs> Call me Bob. Call me Jorge. <laughs> you know? just, just call me, right? right but, but, but what's school all about, right? I'm in graduate school, right? I'm looking to change the MR into a DR, yeah. right? That's rank. Yeah. I, I learned at, at some point um, that the MR actually referred, originally was an abbreviation of the word master before it was an abbreviation of the word mister. So, Mister is a is is a, um, a, 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 a what is it a, um, a decay or a corruption of master, right? right? Um, so, you know, look at look at what happens with women. Women go from not having a title, from being a girl, to being Mrs., which is an adjunct to the Mister, right? And the, the Ms. is a new invention, right? But men go from being a boy and you refer to them mister, to a man you refer to them mister. So men get this automatic title. So there's this myth of equality in our society that doesn't get confronted. We set up inequalities and pretend as though they don't exist. So now we're in this very 
incredible time in history where it's the time for empowerment. You know, it's the time, because trust me, I have just in the last year and a half really started to know that I am worthy by being here in the form I am. That's it, that's all I have to do to have work. I am worthy by being. Your worth is inherent. My worth is inherent in my beingness. And that I am important and I am lovable and you know, the more that we can, so, so now I've been gifted this, this expansion in my, in my knowingness. So then I can be radiant for you so that you can be gifted this expansion in your radiant. radiant. And maybe some days you feel like you're not important. So you pick up the phone or you send an email and you say, I'm feeling unimportant today. And I say, Empress, you know, remember the goddess that you are. You are important and I'm here to just reflect that for you. You know, so, so that's, so, as, so I get clarity, you get clarity, she gets clarity, he gets clarity, and then we're, now we're supporting the up-leveling of our group here. It and then, and then I'm in the grocery store, and I hear someone going off about something, and I and I take the time to say, "Hey, your your needs are valid. Your needs are you just des you deserve to have what you need and desire desire. You know. So then we're reflecting it out in the outer world, and and then. I mean, like, slowly but surely until enough people where it's just like, boom, and the tipping point occurs, and it's like, and we experience something that is so way beyond our most amazing dreams that it's like, wow. You know, so it's that, for me, the self-responsibility is like, Laura, notice when those old stories are coming up and anchor into the new ones. And sometimes I may have to let the emotions clear because there's a lot of shit in there through the years that have built up. I just have to sit. I, cr I cry, like that's how I release, I'll sit, I'll breathe, it'll come up, some tears run, and then, I, and then it just lifts. And then I go about my day, and then it might come up again, and I let it come up, let it come up, No, it's just a feeling, you know, and then, and then I, you know, so that's my, pro that's one of my processes. I'm going to turn this absolutely and completely upside down because I am so <laughs> yeah, for it. That's one of, one of the things, one of the reasons that I love coming here is that for a time in my life I studied philosophy. So when he talks about Plato, when he talks about Aristotle, when again we're talking a little bit about Kierkegaard today, this is music to my soul <laughs> because that's not who I am or where I live. It's also not my lens for the universe. But I'd like you all to consider, and this is where I'm saying, I'm turning this completely upside down. And I the minute it comes out of my mouth, you are all going to groan. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm suggesting is that not to take anything away from being transformed and looking to something higher. But there are some things that are real and that are just here and that provide us with power all the time. And when we say we don't have it and it doesn't exist, it's because we have given it away. Please bear with me. It is not a myth that we say that there is equality in the United States and here is where it comes in. Under our system, there are two things that each of us, each of us has from his age until we die. And that is the right to equal protection and due process no matter who you are. Mm. But do we get it? Excuse me. No matter who you are. Do you know how we know this? Because everybody who shows up in court, everybody, pays the same fee to get in. Everybody. Bill Gates pays exactly as much as I do to start a, a, an action over in the Supreme Court. Here's the other one. Everybody who is charged is arraigned. Bill Gates and me has to spend those minutes being done there. Is it small? Let me say it again. Is it small? No. Are there things like rank? Is there a distinction of who gets what based on who you are, what color you are, what your gender is, and so on and so forth? Absolutely. But the system itself provides all of that to us. Taking into that, what we are talking about again is where we live and is fundamental for the things that we are trying to do, I think, with this movement. Because 
it will ultimately come down to either completely augmenting the system that we have or changing the laws. In order to do that, two things always happen, and this is where you look in to self-respect. When you say that there's something in you, we've heard these words before, that each of us are endowed with inalienable rights. It's the same thing. It's what makes each of us special. There are certain things that we all have in talents and things that can be taken away from us. I'm going to wrap this up. My other point of saying it is to, it gives us power. Why do I stop at the, at the red light? It's my choice. Simply my choice. What's the deal I've made? I've made a deal. Want to hear it? For the most part, I don't break the law. And you know what the government mm -hmm. does? Leaves me the hell <laughs> alone. That's my deal. But the point of it is, let me say this again, empowering from that respect. You see anybody here? You see anybody challenging us to meet like this and to talk about these things? Is there anybody going to show up and take our right away to do this? Let's try yeah. the positive. Let's try the positive one then. We are sitting together in a public park because we have chosen to meet collectively and assemble so that we can talk about the ways that we are and want to be in the world. Then I'm done. What we are, what we are at, and what all of this talk and all of this looking about, to me, is, is the most exciting thing about it. What we know is in the system, we have two things going on. We have individual rights and we have collective rights. And the tension and where things happen and when we make decisions and push forward is that nexus of where they come together. I would suggest that where we are in that, regardless of what we call it, when it is the case that things are so out of kilter that we now have a 99% and a 1%, we're pulling back on this and deciding how to do this. I'm simply saying, I will. You've been saying of, that for five minutes. That's right. <laughs> part of being in power. Part of being in power is realizing that you have more power than they want you to think that you do. And when you say, I have no power to change this, my voice doesn't mean anything, then they won. Thanks. Uh, so we, uh, this, uh, Ida? Yeah. Ida and then John? Okay, I'm, I'm getting back into particulars because I think that my life has been particulars. <laughs> and uh, there, are, what you're saying is wonderful, but not everybody's going to get there one day with something pouring down on them and suddenly the light hits and they know they're there and they have rights. People have come from all kinds of backgrounds that I doubt you two girls have come from, although I can't judge because I don't know. And um, so this is a wonderful idea, but it's not going to reach everyone easily if you want to spread the idea of being self-empowered. There has to be more ways of approaching it. And this is one way that works for somebody that's already a grown-up, but it's not going to help an abused child. It's going to be a waste of time until they get the kind of treatment and care that they need, or somebody who's been enslaved. You, you, it, it's, what I'm saying is it's a good idea, but I think I feel as if it's uh, at this point, from the way I'm hearing it, a little too superficial. And, and that's just me. So. No, don't be. I mean, this is a safe space to share where you're at, and I'm, I'm very <coughs> thankful for your perspective. I'm powerless over the universe or anyone else's actions except my own. I know that I want this world to change, and I must become that change that I want to see in heaven. I want peace, so I must become that peace. I want justice, and I must fight for that same peace. I want love. I must give the love in order to receive that love, so I must become that love. And that's, the, that's what I'm trying to do. And I know that that's the, uh, some of that I've heard, and, and it's also resonating with some other people as well. But one of the things is, is that what happens when, you know, the boot of the oppressor is on my neck, I must take it off. And then once people see me remove that, they're going to be able to do the same as well. And that's some of what is going on. We're standing up now to the powers and saying, 
Take this boot off my neck. I'm tired of you putting it on my neck. And, and they have, in, in a sense, because we've stood up and taken an action. And that same thing is going across the whole world. It started in, yep. in Spain or somewhere like that. Then it spread over to Egypt. And now it's here in a place where we weren't even as oppressed as they were. That's and true. we're finally standing up and we're realizing that we do have the power to become that change that we want to see. Well, and from my understanding is that where it started this past spring was a young man in Tunisia who was selling goods on the side street in a city there who was constantly being harassed to, in his effort to try to make a living for his family and having the police and military there taking his scales and harassing him to no end is that he set himself on fire in protest. And that's what sparked the movements that spread rapidly across the Middle East. And so um, so I get that it it sounds superficial on certain levels. Well, this I is know a, it's well, good. I've been through the meditation thing. Yeah, I mean, this is a multi-dimensional, multi-layered process. There are people who have literally experienced every the grand spectrum from the most horrid things you could ever imagine to the most amazing and you may call this privileged up here but it is what it is there's a grand spectrum just as there are all the emotions and colors of the rainbow you know so so this is just my effort to you know share what's come to me and and yes i i was raised privileged and I put myself on the oh, streets no, at okay. no, 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 I know, but I put myself on the streets at 16. You know, I had a drug problem, I had issues. I went to an all black high school in Louisiana that was quite, there was a lot of violence there. And, you know, so I've put myself in a lot of different scenarios so that I, and now, as a 34 year young woman with my own high schooler, I can, you know, I can relate to different things because I've. I've consciously and subconsciously thrown myself into, you know. And that wasn't a critique of you. It's a critique. No, 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 no. I realize, I realize. But, but so, um, so you know, I give thanks for for your sharing and. Um, and 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 to come back here about maybe the system is fine, and maybe it is that we as individuals have not stepped up and taken the responsibility to see the changes that we need to have in the system, and that there may be other systems that are equally fine, that are also out there not working because there are people that haven't stepped up and taken the individual responsibility yep. to see that things happen the way they're touted to be. You know, that, that everyone does get due process under the law, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Sean, I think the name is Sean, uh, Chris, and then you, and Linda. Okay. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you Aaron. for launching Thanks, this Aaron. and supporting us. Hi, we love you. For the you. justice yes. dialogue. Hi, yeah. Yeah. The train is rolling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Oh, um, excuse me, Ida? Ida? Edie? Edie. Edie. Um, Sean was going to respond to you. Do you have a moment? Oh, yeah, I do. I just, I have a long way to go. I'm just going to share a quick, quick example for you. Thank you for bringing this to this discussion because this is, to me, the linchpin for this movement to, to really, uh, really go somewhere. It's to be aware of what's the relationship with yourself is where it all begins. I've been learning this stuff for a number of years now. I had a traumatic incident. I wasn't a child. I was 21 years old. but pretty young. Didn't know any of this stuff. Um, I was stabbed in my sleep. I was almost killed. So I would call that traumatic. Right? Um, and the baby's crying and it's symbolic. The energy going on right now. So as an example, again, you can get the privilege thing going, but I didn't go through any conventional counseling. I had too much pride. I didn't need it. Years went by, all this was bottled up, anger, rage, you know, I wasn't mad at the individual who did it, I blamed God. I really cut myself off from the source, if you will. Over time, I was guided to uh, a teacher, if you will, locally, and learned a lot of what Sarah and, and Laura are sharing with you today, just different terminology, but saw how I was a victim, how I created it, how it served me, the benefits I've had from it, 
mm -hmm. growth in revisiting it. I just had another layer of healing with it just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Still showing up in my life. Mm -hmm. Each time, though, I become more powerful. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. That's and that's, and that's just an example. You said the little child. They're, they're too young to understand it, but as they grow up and they get this, and people and their parents are practicing it, wow, that generation no, can really I, flourish. I'm talking, I, I guess I, I was, have a little bit of a social work background, and I was thinking about the people that I have come across, and because of the ethics, I can't reveal too much, but I, I've worked with children that were so messed up and so decayed that if somebody came up to them and said, just have confidence in yourself, oh, yeah. you would be wasting your breath. That's, not, that's, not, what, that's yeah, not what we're that's saying. Not what we're <laughs> it goes more to that. And it's like, let's go back to that moment and let's go there. Yeah. Oh, we got to be willing to go there. I know about the therapy <laughs> that works, but yeah. I think... Not a pep talk. <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, you need to include that in your thoughts and in your discussion because some people are going to take it at the superficial level. Right. Right. And think that, oh, if I just think this and practice this, it's going to happen. Well, it's an introductory thing, Edie. That's why I felt called to share yeah. an example that ties into what they're saying. That's what's powerful. And Linda is just I'll chomping just, at the bit yeah, because she's a therapist. Jump up and down. I'm a social worker as well. And one of the thoughts I had, even when we were, you know, talking about law, some conversations you're free to have and some you're not. And I worked in addiction with gang members that had been in and out of prison, very marginalized people, and I still do clinical supervision for populations that are marginalized. And I'll tell you what, when they come in for therapy, they're given a script. My name is, my drug of choices. I've been sober so long. So the freedom to have empowering conversations is very much limited by the environment. And I think as a social worker, I have to say I'm ready to burn my certificate because in the day, social work meant being a voice for the oppressed and looking at the relationship between the individual and social, economic, circumstances, mm. environment. Now, everything is pathology. So one of the things I feel very called to do in my own life is to create healing environments in, like this where we can have the conversation because it becomes very difficult I think in a lot of places a lot of oh, populations oh yeah good. get the DSM I, out I and you're all yeah yeah I, I could respond in kind I agree with you yeah I, I never practiced because of the way I felt about it I practiced to be so mercy that's why I got into it. We'll have a discussion. Thank you, Edie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Chris, I think to Chris, we're gonna. So, I'll do this in a second. Okay. So, if you guys wanna wait until he's done crying, then. Oh, he's fine. He's good. He's reminding so, yes, us of the life force. <laughs> I call that exercising the lungs. <laughs> he might cry while we take him out. Though. Oh, that's okay. Holding him. That's okay. Oh. What I'm actually gonna propose is, um, how about we do Chris and Kaylee? Uh, if there, as long as there's no one else with a burning desire, we'll kind of, you know, wrap this up uh, after these two comments or questions, and then Laura and I maybe. Did you want to? And then we can just kind of wrap it up. And yeah, great. Okay, so you'll Sophia will be the final speaker. Um, Unless, Sophia, do you want to, Chris, do you want to go ahead? Or? I just wanted to sort of piggyback on what the conversation was with Edie and with Sean and with what your goal is, Lauren and Sarah, is really I think that all of us, uh, you know, we have the privilege to look at our inner child and what has happened in our lives in the past that are affecting our, our lives today. And I think that's really very important. I think it's the crux of of transformation so uh, I just wanted to piggyback on that and you know for any enlightenment I believe very strongly that we do need to get into that uh, past to relieve and be with that whatever it might have been um, so but I think it's a wonderful idea and it's just uh, amazing what you, what can happen you know I see transformations in other people and it's inspiring and uh, that's all Thank you. Thank you for being here. Real quickly, I just want to say it's neat. I haven't seen Sophia since I was in Syracuse. We went to the same college together. Yeah. Wow. First time I've seen her in 15 years. No such thing as coincidence. It's a pretty cool thing. Which I didn't even realize.
realize, but yes, we did. We did go to the same college. Wow. Yes, and of course, uh, just so a little FYI, we went to an environmental school, and I'm sure those were idealistic. Uh, we had we had I idealistic ideas. So you know, you kind of you we run with our ideas, and whatever we do with it is uh, really the choice that we have. So me just sitting around and listening to other people is my choice. So until I get up and uh, really feel that empowerment is in, is going to be the day that you know other people will will be you know will get something out of it. But in the meantime, I love what that gentleman said that just left with the hat. John, John. Right. I think that it's very important that we we can uh, really reflect on on what we want within ourselves. If it's light, if it's peace, if it's love. You know, we, we, we absolutely, and I have definitely experimented that it comes back to us. It can be in a, you know, in many different levels. Good things. Thank you, Sophia. And it may not come from the person or thing you're giving it to. It will come, though. Right. It, it just shows up, you know, like yeah. however it's needed in the moment. It's, yeah. Chris. I'll just share that um, the simple instructions from the prophet Isaiah were, Cease to do evil and learn to do good. That's it. That's one of them users that's done here. Seriously. Yeah. That's, that's a great sign. This yeah, but the, this with is the, 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 the Isaiah. Not, not even the reference, but just the, the phrase. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is really good. Can you just say that one more time? Yeah, that's right. Cease to do evil. And learn to do good. And learn to do good. I like the word part. Yes. Yes. And well, to elaborate, uh, neuroscience is learning that brain neurons never stop growing. Right. Mm. That is amazing. So you can so you always can create new pathways, yeah? So we can change it at our core. It's possible. It's just a practice. It's like exercise. You you build the muscle. If you found the right paper, you should do that. <laughs> <laughs> and you show up at this time with, you have to meet with this person. And, and I just want to piggyback off of Chris a little bit and responding to um, what Valerie was saying earlier. Uh, a dear friend of mine who used to come around this joint, these joints, um, said to me, don't believe the first lie. <laughs> and and the first lie is that we're imperfect. Original sin. Original sin. Yeah. So. Mm. Well, I just wanted to offer. Uh, we have one more person, okay. and then we're gonna. Yeah. Um. Well, I um wanted to go back to what Edie was saying, and I'm kind of upset she's not here because I I'm 19. I mean I'm. Probably, yeah, the youngest like person here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, um, she was talking about how uh, it was superficial, I guess. What was she saying was that it was um, superficial to kind of hold these ideals, I guess, was what I understood out of it. And um, because of the, you know, the millions of children who are not, you know, able to just hold confidence in yourselves. And um, I, all right, let me back up for a second. I, like I said, I'm 19. I'm a white girl. I grew up in Orchard Park. Um, I'm very privileged. But um, similar in a way that you said that you put yourself in situations, I had quite a ride um, from like 13 years old to last May. Last May I was in my closet hanging on a belt. Um, I was in a coma for a week. And yeah, well I feel like, I, I mean I normally I don't do this, but I just feel like it's really important to put out there how powerful it really is. Um, yeah, like I said, I was, um, I was in a coma for about four four days and then I was in ECMC for two and a half weeks and this was in May so I haven't even been out a year yet and um, 
I have, I've, I've been in and out of these institutions for years now, um, social workers, clinic workers, drug groups, whatever, you name it. And I have met these awful, like discouraged, worried faces. And it is a lot, I agree, but I don't think at all that it's impossible that every single one of these people can have this waterfall of revelation and I don't like the word revelation because I'm not into all that biblical stuff but I am you know very spiritual um I don't I don't but I mean I really feel like that's where I am in my life at 19 after being at the very lowest a human can bring themselves and I feel like that's an exact measurement of the height that I can aspire to reach because of that and I feel like that is so important to hold that true for everyone that's ever seen grief or injustice and um that's why I wish she was here because I'm mean, even basically speaking to her when I don't think it's fair to say that it can't happen and that it's the very opposite of superficial it's very real and it's very possible and I am so, so thankful that we're here talking about it. Well, you know what's and real? Us. I just love you all. You know what's real? <laughs> Miracles are real. Yes! Miracles yes. happen every day. So let us all release the need to um, uh, limit our youth. Our youth are so resilient and so brilliant, and can, and especially the little ones now are connected to a higher level realm anyways. Why do you so think he's crying when he's talking you know, about his dad and doing but it? But we're about love. The more that we it's can not. all just, you know, it's like, yeah, open up. I just want to throw out there my interpretation of what Edie was saying, and I think it's a very, very valid point and one that's caused a lot of discussion is that it's just a challenge. That it's not yes. possible, yes. or not that it's superficial, but some people are going to hear some words about be empowered, take control of your life. And it's just going to be words to them. And so I think she was yeah. elucidating a challenge to how yes. do you really get them to understand that and to internalize it and really feel empowered. Wait. Well, it's so something Sarah and I are, are interested in and in right. cre co-creating is, is actually like a tangible program Method. that we take. can bring into schools and community centers and so we'll take two more <laughs> Nora Chris and then Nora I think I saw Chris's hand up. Well, I just wanted just a second uh, but the personal responsibility which you introduced in the beginning mm -hmm. um, when like when if, if we disagree with what somebody says they're still bringing forth a dialectic so that you know like a, they're bringing forth a, a, a perspective that can help us absolutely you know so even even the, the most disagreeable person with me can be my teacher and yes. when I take personal responsibility it's um, I have a, a choice of my response or the way I receive that information too so that's right and just because someone disagrees doesn't make it right or wrong or it works or it doesn't work you just disagree you may feel it works they may feel it doesn't and there's a mul just as there are a spectrum of emotions there's a spectrum of ways of, of getting there I represent abused and neglected kids um, the reason I put it out there in that is that it's a simple act, and we've all talked about how the personal responsibility would transform into something else, and I think it goes directly in what the Edie has said. I'm not saying that any of us who do this are saviors, but this. The simple act of standing up with a child and saying, no one will treat you like this again is where that starts. Yeah. And I know Linda's giving it to me because it's exactly what happens to her in therapy with damaged children was when she could they bring them in and say in this place you are safe mm. and no one will do this for oh. you again but again this is what i tried to talk about before the nexus of where this comes together when you have the personal versus the collective i guess the thing is with joe and i promise sean I, 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 just don't say you're gonna wrap it up and then keep going <laughs> And I know, and again, going back to what I was saying before, I am not Pollyanna. I realize everything that everything has been said, but part of not being a victim is not using the victim or the language of victimhood as in, well, what can I do? It doesn't matter. 
it's too big, it, it makes any difference. Again, this is the story we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But if you get up every day and say, yeah, it does, it matters. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the dome, and I'm going to hang out with a bunch of freaks. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I just feel like I feel some emotion present. I think that I am so like humbled and just touched. I mean, Kaylee, like your boldness. <sighs> We're really happy you're still here. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Yeah. 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 I'm a much better place. Oh. oh my goodness. And that's what I mean. I just want to thank you. Like, the self responsibility that I've been taking on, because that, I, I mean, I, my cognitive dissonance is what put me down there in the first place. And showing up and being active in my own life. I didn't know I had a choice. Mm. But here I am, happy as a lark, freezing my ass off in the dome with other freaks. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I just, for the first time ever, I guess, in my life, I see myself not only having a future,